Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today is July 24th. We're going on our fourth day of continued rain, high humidity, and really non-stop rain. These are my container tomatoes, determinate varieties. A lot of them have leaf spot. It's been managed well. Can't stop it usually, but it's been managed well that I'm getting tons of production. But today's all about using hydrogen peroxide, the 3% solution that you buy in stores, on your tomato plants. Hydrogen peroxide is not a preventative. It's actually something that should kill off the fungus and I've decided to test all of these plants. So I'm using six tablespoons of 3% hydrogen peroxide in a gallon of water. Years ago, I'll link the video, I did a 3% complete spray and it burned out my pepper plant. So you don't want to use it at full strength. Last year I did it to a 3 to 1 ratio. That still was a little bit too strong. So now I'm going with six tablespoons per so gallon. So I wanted to cut in real quick and explain to you the different sprays that you can put on your plants. So we're talking about tomato plants and we're trying to prevent fungus from establishing and growing. These products are used differently than hydrogen peroxide. Baking soda, when you make your spray, you put it on the tomato leaf, it increases the pH level on your tomato leaf. And the fungus need a specific pH to grow, to reproduce, this changes the pH level so that fungus really can't go through its life cycle. It can sometimes stop a fungus or fungi and it can sometimes just slow it down so that your plant can produce. Wettable sulfur does the same thing but opposite. It makes the leaf of the tomato plant more acidic. The fungus can't go through its life cycle. It can sometimes stop the, fungals, uh, the fungus from progressing and it sometimes it can slow it. When it rains, these get washed off. Serenade is a little bit different. It's good bacteria that doesn't hurt your tomato plant. It coats the leaf of the plant. The bacteria compete with the, the fungi and it's harder for the fungus to establish on your plants. And actually if you go to YouTube um, and you search how does serenade work, it'll do a, it gives a really nice description, cartoon really, of how this works. But the positive bacteria in here secrete enzymes, I believe they said, and those enzymes can attack the fungus and make them weaker so that they can establish. Different mode of action. They say that this is good for about seven to 10 days. Don't know what happens if it rains heavily. And you can hear the rain coming here. And that's why I decided to go to the hydrogen peroxide because all this stuff keeps getting washed off and the fungus are progressing, the fungi is progressing on my tomato plants. Dacanil is human made. This is a spray that it coats the leaf occupies the pores of the tomato plant, the tomato leaf, and the fungus can't really get established. This is waterproof. This can last, you know, up to 10 days. When would I use this? I would use this when I'm not picking fruit and I have at least four to six weeks before harvest. You might do this on younger tomato plants. That's up to you. Hydrogen peroxide. So hydrogen peroxide works differently. It's H2O2. It's an extra oxygen molecule. Water is H2O. When you spray your tomato leaf, it covers the fungus, that extra oxygen atom, the H2O2, that extra oxygen atom wants to leave or break away. When it breaks away, it creates energy. That energy is strong enough that it kills the fungus. And when sunlight hits H2O2, it really quickly breaks down to oxygen and water. If the concentration is too high on your plant leaf, it's going to damage your plant leaf. So that's why I'm really working at six tablespoons, eight tablespoons, and 12 tablespoons per gallon. I really want to go past that, but feel free to use my experiment, add to it, and let me know how it goes for you. But I just wanted to explain the different modes. You wouldn't want to use all these at once. Don't combine them. Hopefully that's helpful. It makes some sense to you. So today we're talking about a spray that we spray once, it reacts with the fungus, the H2O2 goes away, there's no more protection left on your plant. These last a long time. All right, let's get back All to the video. these plants have been sprayed. I wanted to just show you what they look like now. We're gonna wait three days, see if anything changes. They've all been sprayed, soaked with the hydrogen peroxide. And when you use hydrogen peroxide, you wanna make it fresh. You don't want to let it sit for hours, then use it again, because hydrogen, the H2O2, the hydrogen peroxide, will actually break down, especially if it's hit by sunlight. So this is what it looks like. Also sprayed the cucumbers over there, and then I sprayed some cucumber leaves down here for a powdery mildew experiment. Let me go show you what I sprayed out this in the garden. This is a healthier tomato plant, soaked on the tops and on the bottom, again with that six tablespoons per gallon. Leaf spot 
is on some of the leaves and the brandy wines are highly susceptible to disease. So I wanted to really soak this down. Again, we're going to see how it looks in three days. Also sprayed all the cucumber leaves right across the bottom. You always want to test spray any new sprays. Wait two or three days, see if there's any damage. Let me go show you the other tomatoes I sprayed. So this is my early girl. It's been doing pretty well. I've been getting a lot of tomatoes off of it, but it also has leaf spot and you can see the leaves down the bottom are more beat up and they were being sprayed, but I didn't spray them last week when I did the rest of the garden because the rain was coming. Leaves up top look better, completely soaked down with the hydrogen peroxide spray. That is my mar globe. Not too much leaf spot on there, but that will be a great sample plant to see how it reacts to the new spray. And this is my Jubilee. Up top, the green growth looks pretty good and that's because I was battling the leaf spot down here with the sulfur spray. This got soaked down too. So we're going to just see how the plants react. And I'm going to spray this again tomorrow with the same solution. Once tonight, the rain won't matter that much because the hydrogen peroxide is going to work on contact really. It's going to break down pretty quickly. As it breaks down, it should kill off the fungus. At least that's the theory. It doesn't stay on your plants like other um, fungicides do. This one really attacks the leaf spot and the other fungi and related diseases. So the rain continues. Day two, it's been 24 hours since I hit them with the hydrogen peroxide. And this is a great plant to really look at. There's no browning, no dark green spots, no marks on here from the hydrogen peroxide. So test spraying really does two things. One, we don't want to damage the plant with the spray, and I'm going to spray everything again today. But we also want to make sure that it's effective. So I'm looking for it to not damage the plants and for it to really do something. Also, it didn't damage the cucumber plants. So six tablespoons in one gallon doesn't seem to damage the plants, but now we got to make sure it benefits them in some way. So today is the third day. So it's been 48 hours since I've been using the six tablespoons in a gallon of water. And what I noticed, well, one, no damage from the spray. But on my brandy wine, I'm seeing spots with yellow around it. And that's usually a sign of leaf spot or something. It's not always. But I decided to up the strength now to eight tablespoons. So I'm giving everything a spray, spraying the cucumbers. So we'll do this for two days, see how things look and I'll progress slowly to find that right balance of no damage from the hydrogen peroxide but benefit with the fungus. Here are some of the tomato plants four days 96 hours after spraying them with the hydrogen peroxide. The first two days I sprayed each day with six tablespoons per gallon. Days three and four I sprayed eight tablespoons per gallon and these all got sprayed every day four days. There's no damage on the leaves. That's the first thing we want to look for is make sure the hydrogen peroxide doesn't damage the leaves. But we also want to make sure it reduces the fungi or the fungus on the plants. So I'm going to wait another two days. Let these go. I'm not going to spray them anymore. But there's no damage on the leaves and then I will clean them up, stake them up, and I'll show you the outcome of using six to eight tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide per gallon. So these are the determined variety tomatoes that are up in containers. It's been six days since the initial spraying. I did two days of six tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide in a gallon of water, and then I went to eight tablespoons for the next two days. This plant is a Siberian. It is a determined variety and it really did pretty well with the treatment. I did not prune anything out of the plants up here. I'm going to show you the other plants where I did prune. And the whole goal was to really slow the leaf spot, the fungus, so that I got production. And I took a lot of fruit off of here. So for the Siberian, six to eight seemed to work. This is my Glacier, another determined variety. And it worked for a bit, but the leaf spot came back. And I think the potato leaves are just more susceptible to the spot. Some clean leaves, but not as good as the Siberian there. The Rutgers, another determinate variety. Lots of damage. Stopped. And then when you come up here, we have new growth with no, no issues or anything like that. And I'm feeling like eight tablespoons is perfectly fine. 
but I feel like I can take that higher. So I am going to do another dose and I'm actually going to just jump to uh, 12 tablespoons per gallon. This is the Baxter's Bush semi-determinate. Lots of spotting on there. This plant does have some issues with disease, but it controlled it for me to at least get a harvest off. It's been a week and this probably would go another week. Now the Marglobe, I'm sorry, this is a Bradley, it's doing pretty well. There are damages down there from before I started spraying the hydrogen peroxide, but the upper growth is looking good. Flowers are coming back. And then this was an early girl in there. And again, I did not do any pruning on here so you could just see what was left, compare it to the plants on the first day of the initial spraying. And this one's responding pretty well. Growth is coming back and there's no spotting up there. Okay, let me take you down to the ground where I actually did some pruning and the results are pretty impressive. So this so is my other early girl. The plant next to it is Subarctic Max. That was not sprayed. I did prune out some of the damaged leaves from the early girl and just want to show you all the leaf growth that's happened over the last six days. No damage on the new leaves. Lots of new fruit coming in. 10 tablespoons per gallon has been effective for this variety and it looks really really good. I mean all kinds of new growth. You can see some damage in there. I didn't take every leaf but it's doing well. Coming over here we have the Brandywine Yellow and no damage on the leaves from the hydrogen peroxide. I did prune out some of the lower leaves and you can see some spotting on the leaves, but it's not really that bad. And I think that 10 tablespoons has been helpful. You can see where the spot was, it's kind of died off and it's almost crumbled to where there's like holes in it. And again, I'm going to actually treat this plant with the 12 tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide per gallon because I want to bring it up to a point where it's really, really effective, but no damage to the leaves. And I found the potato leaf really shows off any kind of damage from hydrogen peroxide. So that will be my test subject. Okay, let's go over to the other three This plants. was the Golden Jubilee, and if you look back to the beginning, it was pretty beat up and smaller. It seemed to do well with the spray. The leaves look good for all the new growth, so it does look like it slowed it. And when you're noticing the white on my plants, we're getting another seven days of rain, so the hydrogen peroxide is to kill off the fungi. This is my treatment to prevent the different funguses or fungi from coming onto my plants. Here is another tomato. I don't think this was an early girl, but I lost the tag. I thought it was a cherry. It's not. But again, it did well with the spray. I did prune out some leaves, but you can see all the tomatoes on there. I'm going to take some of them off and lots of nice green growth with no spotting. And again, I want to work the tablespoon dosage up per gallon to find that kind of sweet spot. No leaf damage and really great control for the different fungus. And this is my Mar Globe. It did okay. You can see lots of nice green growth some spotting on there. You know what, I think I'll give this one a 12 tablespoon spray too. All right, let me do that and give it another two days to look for damage. Okay, so it's been two more days since I sprayed this plant and several other plants with 12 tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide in one gallon of water. And in, in the clip just before this one, I said this one was doing fine with 10 tablespoons. I meant to say with the eight tablespoons, this plant is doing well, as did the other plants. I jumped up to 12 tablespoons per gallon. I've waited 48 hours and there's no damage on these plants. And in fact, I was mentioning before, you can see holes. I think this is where the hydrogen peroxide wiped out the fungus. That part of the leaf was already infected. It died and it just crumbled away. But it looks really, really good. 12 tablespoons, no damage on the plant. I don't see much signs or many signs or much worry. <laughs> from the fungus. Some of the older plants still have, you know, marks on there, but the newer growth looks really, really good. I was also spraying the cucumbers. I can't say that this 
mixtures ready for cucumbers and zooks, but I've been testing that. I'll do another video on that. Here is the other plant. This is the early girl. Same kind of pattern. Where the fungus was, now there's holes. It's just like the, I think hydrogen peroxide really took care of that problem and it just crumbled away. This plant looks really, really good. You can see areas that are now turning brown where there was fungus or some sort of disease. It looks really healthy. Some on this one right here. Now, when you have early blight and you have the different fungus active, it's usually a dark spot and a nice bright yellow ring around it. When that yellow ring is gone, it often means the fungus is no longer active. But it, looked, it looks like it really worked. I mean, these plants look really, really healthy. Let's, let me go show you um, the other plants that got the 12 tablespoons. Okay, so this is my other bed that was sprayed. These tomatoes were sprayed with the 12 tablespoons per gallon. This is the Orange Jubilee. Really nice green growth up top. No damage from that ratio of H2O2 to water. As you come down further, there's still the damage that was originally there, but it's not progressing. The plant over here looks pretty good, minus the tomatoes I forgot to harvest two days ago. They look a little bit beat up. Nice and green. Where there was the fungus, where there was the leaf spot, there's still some damage. But I don't see a new outbreak up top. I see zero damage from that ratio of H2O2. And the same thing over here. This Marglobe looks pretty good. It actually has some spotting on here, so I'm going to spray this one again. So, in review, six to eight tablespoons to spray on your plant leaves if you don't see the fungus but you know it's arriving and it's kind of a way just to spray and prevent the fungus from getting hold. And if it does establish, I would go with the 10 to 12 tablespoons per gallon and I would do it over three cycles. So I would spray, wait 48 hours, spray again, wait 48 hours, and spray again, wait 48 hours. And after that week, take a look, the plants should have nice green leaves and hopefully your fungus and your problems are under control. Now, the hydrogen peroxide contacts the leaves, reacts, and helps get rid of the fungus. It doesn't prevent the fungus from coming on. It's different. It's when you have the actual fungi on your plant leaves, the H2O2 reacts with the leaf, kills off the fungi or the problem. Your fungicides or your fungicides like baking soda, wettable sulfur, dacanol, serenade, prevent the fungus from getting a hold of your leaves. So you spray that on there, it sits on there, the fungus can't get a hold, can't get onto your leaves. And basically what they do is they change the pH of your leaf. So the fungus doesn't have a nice place to live, so it doesn't establish. That's different than the H2O2. I just want to make that clear. The H2O2 is actually contacting the fungi that are on your leaves and killing that off. So you have to use both products, really. Hope that makes sense. Please test spray. Even though you watched me go through the steps with these tomato plants, it's really important that whenever you try new sprays in your garden, that you test spray and you do the work yourself. Please check out my seed shop at www.therustedgarden.com. Thanks for watching.